Hello everyone, and welcome to a new tutorial. Today, we're going to learn how to create the classic house bass line that adds groove and energy to your tracks, and can be found across nearly every house subgenre, from deep house to tech house. Let's get started. First, open Biotech 3 and select a clean patch to start from scratch. Head over to Oscillator 1, where we'll use the default sine wave as our primary sound source. Click the magnifying glass to expand the view. The sine wave is ideal for house bass lines because it provides a clean, deep sound that fits perfectly into the mix. We'll tweak the shape slightly to achieve a more hollow tone. Additionally, set the sound to mono to ensure notes don't overlap during fast rhythms. Next, let's set the tuning. Lower the octave of oscillator 1 to ensure the bass has enough weight in the low frequencies. The C1 or C2 range works perfectly for a typical house bass line. We'll also add a second oscillator without any major modifications simply to reinforce the 100 to 200 hertz range, which might feel a bit empty after lowering the first oscillator by an octave. Balance the levels between both oscillators until you find the optimal mix. Now, to give the sound that characteristic bounce, we'll click the envelope 3-4 tab and configure amplitude envelope 4 with a very quick attack, 1 to 2 milliseconds, and a medium decay, 200 to 400 milliseconds. This ensures each note hits with definition without lingering too long. Set the sustain to 0% and the release to around 100 milliseconds for a clean cutoff at the end of each note. Let's move to the filter. From Filter 1, select a low pass to smooth out harmonics and focus energy on the low frequencies. Set the cutoff frequency around 80 Hz and slightly increase the resonance in FM to add character to the sound. Adjust these settings to taste. To add movement to the baseline, we'll apply velocity modulation to the filter. Go to the Source 1 tab, select Velocity, and apply it by dragging to around 25%. This will create a subtle dynamic sway depending on note velocity, making the sound feel more alive. Click to exit Assign View. The next step is to add more punch to the bass. Head to the Effects section and select the Medium Distortion in Slot 1. Setting the drive between 10% and 20% should be enough to thicken the sound while keeping it clean. In effect slot 2, we'll add a compressor to enhance transients and give the bass line more impact. Bring the threshold down to around minus 20. Increase the ratio slightly to 1.3. Set a fast attack time of around 4 milliseconds and finally set the release of about 50 milliseconds for best results. We'll make some fine adjustments to taste. Close the effects panel, and let's now duplicate the signal using the unison module. This will add some stereo width and give a slight detuning to the voices. We'll want to keep this effect subtle to avoid losing too much energy in the center. Set the count to 2, the spread to around 30%, and detune to around 15. Again, tweak the parameters to taste. We'll now remove the subsonic frequencies to prevent the lowest range from becoming overwhelming. Engage the EQ, expand its view, and select Low Cut. Cut at around 40 Hz. To help the bass line stand out more, 
will boost the 2 to 3 kilohertz range around 6 decibels. Finally, we'll head back to envelope 4 to adjust the amplitude decay curve. This will give us a tighter and more solid sound. With that, you now have a classic house bass line built from scratch. Remember, the groove mainly comes from how you program the notes in your sequencer. Use typical house rhythms with offbeat accents and experiment with note lengths to perfect the vibe. Of course, feel free to add a touch of reverb to create some spatial depth. Thanks for watching and see you in the next sound design tutorial.